Hi everyone, welcome to Bell's Books. I'm Carly. I hope you're all doing well and surviving in this heat if you're in the UK. I don't cope well with the heat, um, but today I've been for a nice swim in the river, so that was lovely. Today I want to talk to you about um, the best books I've read so far this half of the year. So I'm going to do the mid-year freak out tag um, but adapt it. I'm doing the same thing that Emma does in a couple of books where she kind of picks the questions from two different tags um, and smushes them together. So I will link Emma's video um, down below and the original tag creators of the Midyear Freakout and I think it's the check-in. Anyway, let's talk about the books that were my favourites for this half of the year. So, first question is... <laughs> What's your favourite book for this half of the year? Um, and I can't pick just one, so I'm going to go for two. And I, oh, apologies also, if you can hear a howling and barking dog, it's next door's dog. It barks and howls a lot of the time. It's fine. It just has abandoned issues. She's barking now. She's very old and she barks a lot. Okay, so the, my favourite, I'm going to go for two favourites for the first half of the year. I don't think I've got either of them. No, I don't, because they were library books. They were Silver Sparrow by Tiara Jones, which I adored. I loved this book so much. I think because it resonated with me on a bit of a personal level. It's about um, a secret family. So it's about these two sisters that don't know what only one of them knows about the existence of the other so there's this dude and he has one family that he uh, lives with and is public with and then he has another family he's a bigamist that um he kind of visits and are they are his secret family so the secret family know about the public family obviously and it's about these two girls and the way that it all kind of falls out and the interaction of it and I just, I was so invested in this book. I adored it. I loved both parts of the narrative where you hear from the secret sister first and then um, the public sister second. And I thought I wouldn't like it when it switched. And I just, I loved both of it, both sides of the story. I was totally invested. I loved Tara Jones's writing. I thought it was a, just a fabulous, fabulous novel. I loved it so much. And now, um, I want to read American Marriage, haven't read it yet, but I'm kind of slightly apprehensive because I'm worried I won't like it as much as I liked Silver Sparrow. So there was that, which is one of my top favourites, and also Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller, which I read as part of the Women's Prize because it's in the Women's Prize shortlist. Again, I, I have read Claire Fuller before and I did enjoy, um, I've spoken about this before, I did enjoy um, Our Endless Number of Days, but Unsettled Ground was really fantastic. I just adored this novel. Um, lots of people have spoken about it, so you probably know what it's about. It's about these 50-year-old twins, um, Jeannie and Julius, who um, have to come to terms with living by themselves when their mother, their, their elderly mother, keels over and dies unexpectedly. Um, they are in extreme poverty and they live in a rural location. The thing that I found really um, intriguing and engaging was the fact that they are trying to get by and they're living in rural poverty. And um, I think some other people have mentioned that you there are a lot of books about uh, poverty in, in urban areas, but not so much in rural areas. And so I thought that was really cleverly, cleverly explored. And um, I just really like the detail of that and like the way that Jeannie is having to scrimp together all of the money that they have which is very little and their basic needs of being fed and having heat in the house and so having somewhere to live were just not met because they just didn't have enough money um and throughout the novel they're both learning dot secrets as as they get to know a bit more about their mother and i thought that was really well done um and i was very pleased that there was no horrendously shocking twist at the end like there was with our endless numbered days because I just couldn't have coped with that I just thought it was an exquisite novel I love Claire Fuller's writing um I do have a couple of her, her other books and I would like to read them um 
so she's just one of those authors that I think is going to be someone that I enjoy reading no matter what they write. So Unsettled Ground was another favourite for this first half of the year. Okay, next question. Um, favourite sequel? Now, I don't read series at, generally at all. I don't read series. So I thought, well, I won't have anything to answer for this question. But I did because, and it's a book I have so I can hold it up. Summer by Ali Smith, which I've spoken about before. You know I love Ali Smith um, and <laughs> I'm going to talk about it all the time. I'm going to do a separate video on this. As I keep saying, I haven't done it yet, I know. Um, the reason I love this so much was because, partly because I love Ellie Smith's writing and it's, you know, <laughs> it's a surefire thing. It's going to be, it's going to be a winner for me. But because this was the culmination of the seasonal quartet, which has been going since 2016, not only have I been invested in this quartet as just a general reader, I'm studying this for my PhD, so these books are pretty much my life. <laughs> um, they mean a lot to me. And when I got to this book, it's just, it felt like partly I was really pleased to read it, but partly I didn't want to let it go. It was very emotional. And this book is quite emotional as well. I've spoken about the fact that there's not much plot in Ali Smith and plot isn't the real thing that she she does her writing is um very fun very playful she's a wordsmith she likes to play with words and language and she likes to look at big themes abstract things like time um so that's all great and i love i love that but the thing that i loved about this book in particular was it it does return to previous characters that we've met in the other books it doesn't wrap things up because it's like a all of these books are about the present and about living in the now but the thing that I loved about this was that you go back to those characters you meet them again and you go backwards and forwards in time as usual with Ellie Smith we come back to Daniel who is my favorite character in this in this series and we learn more about his life um when he was in a detention camp um during the war and that was quite heart-wrenching. But the thing that I loved about this book, although it's it was writing about 2020, which was all of the shitstorm, you know, so that it has about the pandemic, it has about um, the racism surrounding uh, the Black Lives Matter protests. It just has about <laughs> the horrible government that we have here in the UK and their disregard for everybody. But the thing that Ali Smith does that I love so much is that she always infuses such hope and positivity in her work. And although this was a book about a terrible year and lots of terrible things, I always come away feeling like she's holding out a beacon of hope for the reader. And it's she talks a lot about hospitality and kindness and looking out for one another. And that I found very emotional. So... This was my favourite sequel <laughs> for all the series that I read. <laughs> okay, new releases you want to read. There are a lot. I've been buying new releases as they come out and I don't read fast. Like by booktube standards, I'm a slow reader. So there are still a lot that I need to catch up with. I've picked out four to talk to you about. Um, I'll try and whiz through these. The High House by Jesse Greengrass. Um, this is is I think set in um, or just after lots of floods so it is about a house that this woman had as her holiday home and she's been preparing for an apocalypse style event so I get the impression that waters have risen there have been lots of floods and this house they flee to as a family I think it's her um, her child and a, and a stepchild and it's about them escaping to this house and living there in this kind of end times deal um i don't know much else about it um but i would like to read this very soon i've heard lots of good things about it from eric over at lonesome reader one that i haven't seen talked about much is cunning women and um, by elizabeth lee this is um 
set in the 17th century, I think around the Pendle Witch Trials. It's a witch book. It's about a family of cunning women um, and how the village goes to them for help, but also then turns on them when uh, they get persecuted for being witches. I think it might also be a romance because it sounds like um, one of the young girls um, meets this dude who's trying to tame a horse. There's a bit of a romance vibe there. I don't usually go for romance. I don't generally like romance. So we'll see. But also look at this cover. It's a beauty. Anything about witches is a win really in my in my book. I just got this from the library. Um, second place by Rachel Cusk. Rachel Cusk is an author that I have not read, I don't think, but I have a lot of expectation for her work. I feel like I would really like what she does. Um, I don't know if it's particularly experimental. This book is about a woman who invites um, a, this famed artist to her coastal home. I think with a view to try and get this artist to help her come to terms with something in her life. I, again, I don't think this is very plot based. I think it's more about ideas and themes. So I'm looking forward to reading this. It's not a very big novel either. I haven't read the other trilogy. I've got all of I've got two of them, I think, um, the Outline trilogy. Um, but Rachel Cusk is one of those authors where I think I'm probably going to love everything that she writes. So I will read this and then find out. And um, also anticipated This One Sky by This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross um, because it's a beautiful book. Um, I have met Leonie. I met her at a creative writing weekend that I was on. She taught a class that I did. She's fantastic. I love her work. I've read half of her short story collection, <laughs> not all of it. Um, her short stories are amazing. Um, it's called Come Let Us Sing Anyway. Would highly recommend that. I adore them. Um, this is a book set in, um, I think it's a series of islands, uh, like this magical series of islands and everyone on the island has a magical power so it's magic realism apparently the writing in here is just stellar in terms of its um, imagination and the creation of the island and all of the people and the characters so i'm very much looking forward to this okay next question most anticipated releases for the second half of the year i never i never look out for books that are up and coming I find out about books that are coming out through other booktubers mostly um the one that I am anticipating is Maggie Nelson's new book on freedom which I think is I don't know whether it's a series of essays or it's just um it's a, it's a non-fiction but it is about looking at the concept of freedom and she is looking at it through four different categories which I wrote down and now I've promptly forgotten art sex drugs and climate which you know that's a strange collection of categories but i'm here for it so she's looking at the concept of freedom through those categories and the thing i love about maggie nelson's writing and Mag maggie nelson is an author that i'm also um looking at for my research is that she blends things like critical theory with pop culture with her own personal experience and I love that kind of stuff. I'm here for that. So I'm very much excited to get my hands on that when it comes out later on in the year. I don't know when it is. I haven't looked that up. Okay. Biggest disappointment. Oh, I'm really sad about this. My biggest disappointment was Cinderella is dead. I had so much just because I build it up so much in my mind. I had so much hype. I'd seen it around a lot on booktube and I don't know why, because I don't often read young adult fantasy, but I am, as I've spoken about before, currently on a young adult fantasy binge, particularly to do with fairy tale retellings. And I was so down for this book and it disappointed me because it just was too heavy handed. The idea was great. The delivery was just lacking for me. Um, and I've spoken about this in my in the wrap up that I, when I talked about it, but it just felt like it was just too much. Men are terrible. Men are terrible on every page. Look how bad this is. And it was just like way over the top. And I just felt it could have been done a bit more <laughs> subtly. <laughs> so I was kind of sad about that. Um, but 
I still might read, I don't know whether to read her, I think she's got a new one out called Poison Heart, which again I think is another fairy tale riff, so I might try it out. I'm going to look for some reviews and see what people say about that. Mostly I'm going to see if Jessie over at Bowties and Books picks it up because their feelings on it were the same as mine. <laughs> Next question is what was your biggest surprise? I don't really know how to answer this question because I feel like I don't know if I had a surprise. The only one that I can think of is A Ghost in the Throat by Doreen Negriefer because I was I love this book. I was really impressed with it. And I just I knew what it was when I went into it. Obviously, it's a non-fiction and it blends the um it blends like some research that Doreen Negriefer was doing into um an old Irish poet. I can't even remember. 18th century poet and it blends her own reflections on her own life like just incidences of 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 her life and then it kind of merges together with this with this woman who is who is not really written about in historical record and I think it was a my biggest surprise just because I was surprised by how much I loved it I, I was surprised by the format and what it did I've just never read anything like it and I just adored it. I think it, I just thought it was fantastic, even though it's kind of a little bit, but completely different from Maggie Nelson because both, both authors draw in their own life into the text. Maybe it does do something similar, but this was just looking at one, one poet, one author and it was like she was becoming obsessed with her and finding out about her and I was just really here for that journey I just really enjoyed this read I had such a good time with it every time I put it down I was looking forward to picking it up again and it just felt new and fresh and it was just something like I said I've not really read before even though it kind of does similar things to to Maggie Nelson but yeah it was just new and interesting and I loved it a lot the next question is favourite new to you author or debut author. I was going to go with Tayari Jones because um, I love Silver Sparrow so much, but actually I'm going to go with Tori Peters because I recently read Detransition Baby. I really enjoyed it. It made me think a lot. There's a lot in here. It's a very complex and nuanced novel. I had a library copy of this, I took it back and then I found this in a charity shop uh, for £2. So I picked it up because this, this is a book that I thought, um, I love getting books out of the library because it means that I don't clutter up my study, as you can see, which is already cluttered with lots of books. But you know when you read a book and you're like, I want to reread that and I want to go in and I want to annotate and mark pages and come back to this. So I bought a copy because I thought this is what Tori Peters did she made me think a lot and there is so much in this book that I felt like I didn't when I reviewed it I didn't give it I didn't do it justice because I still haven't processed everything and for me that's a that's the marker of a great book because it makes you think and I've been thinking about this book since I finished it and the writing is quite dense um I'd say it's kind of it's not academic, but there's a lot of intellectual stuff going on in here. <laughs> so it's one of those books where I feel like I, I need some breathing space and I want to come back to it. So I would definitely read anything that Tori Peters writes. Um, and I will be watching what she brings out in the future. And I think she has published before, but I'm, so I'm going to look up the her previous, any previous work that she's published because... I really enjoyed this and I'm pleased I've managed to get a copy now. The next question is weird and I wasn't going to answer it. It's a fictional crush or favourite character. I'm going to go with favourite character because I don't get fictional crushes. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Um, so my favourite character was Jeannie from Unsettled Ground, as I've already spoken about. I just adored that novel and I loved her strength and determination. And it's not often that you hear from 50-year-old characters, so I really like that, that it was an older character. And she's been very sheltered and lived this very um, 
like I say, this life in kind of poverty, but they they were happy in their little family unit. And then when that was completely disrupted at that age and for her to be challenged like that, to have to be evicted and to keep going and to fight for a life that she doesn't know what that life is going to be. I just thought that her determination was just bang on. I loved it. And the fact that she had a dog, I was really worried when there's an, whether when there's a dog or any kind of animal mentioned in a book and you think, oh God, something awful is going to happen to this animal. And I said, I said to Dan at the beginning when I started reading this, if this dog dies, I'm going to be so angry. The dog doesn't die. Spoiler. <laughs> um, but her love for her dog was just like, mm, I loved it so much. Um, and I love Jeannie. She's a fantastic character. And again, that would be a book that I would love to reread. Okay, next question is a book that made me cry. Um, I don't cry easily, right? I do not cry generally at books. This book made me cry. Like I've said, it was emotional for me because it was the end of the series. It was the last book that um, I am writing about for my that section of my PhD. The thing that made me cry was partly Daniel's story when you see him interred in this camp and um and it's in the heat of summer and that felt so oppressive like being locked up in this place for doing nothing wrong and um, for just being an alien and the way that he w was interacting with his sister from miles away and the connection that they had where like he writes a letter to his sister that she's never going to get because he burns it and that was a pact that they made and I felt that relationship with his sister where they would do this thing where they would write letters but burn them they would never know what the other one had written and I just felt like that sense of absence and loss and longing for a family member was just so heartbreaking but full of love so there was that part but also um in the kind of present day our character Sasha Greenlaw is writing letters to um a refugee who has again been interred in a detention camp who like an asylum seeker and she's writing to him and he's writing back to her and I felt those letters were so emotive again and heartbreaking but also so full of hope and warmth and like I say hospitality Ali Smith is trying to trying to tell us just be hospitable to your fellow humans. It doesn't matter that there is a border in this country. These people are trying to stay alive. And that's the message of this book. Just help your fellow humans. They are just people. Help them. And the way she does it is just so exquisite with such warmth and joy and love. And it just made my heart ache. So that made me cry. And that never happened. I never cry at books. <laughs> The next question is a book that made me happy. Now, the book that made me happy was uh, A Snowfall of Silver by Laura Wood. I read this right at the beginning of the year. It was my first read and it was just so, so lovely because I was kind of having a difficult time and I was, you know, the world is shit. Everything was miserable. And this was just pure nostalgic joy. It's set in the 30s. It, it follows Freya, who is a like an 18 year old runaway from home. She's gone to London to make her fortune in the theatre world. She wants to be an actress. And it was just lovely. It was about her getting into this theatre company and then they go on tour, putting on this play. And it was just lovely. <laughs> That's the only adjective I can use to describe it. It was pure kind of comfort and nostalgia and there's a little bit of romance there, which I didn't find cloying. Usually I don't like romance. And, and that was just, I thought it was very well done. I love her descriptions of the company and all the theatres. I loved, you know, at a time when you couldn't go anywhere, reading about being in theatres and putting on productions. I, I like that and being backstage because I used to do a little bit of performing and so it kind of felt nostalgic, not just because it was, you know, an, uh, set in the 1930s, but it was nostalgic because I was reminiscing about my backstage days um, and getting ready to perform and that feeling of um, being utterly terrified about when you're about to go on stage. So that was just 
beautiful i enjoyed that very much and she's also got a new book coming out this year which is another anticipated read and i'm very excited to pick that up okay next question is most beautiful book there are quite a lot actually and the ones that i've already shown you i think are beautiful covers like this stunning one from um, elizabeth lee i think the high house is really pretty but again, I think I'm going to go with this one, Sky Day, because I love a sprayed edge, and that is just beautiful. I'm a sucker for going into Waterstones, and if it's got sprayed edges, I'm having it, mate. It's going straight in my basket. Right, what's the last question? The last question is, books you want to read by the end of the year? <laughs> All of them. All of them, mate. I've got a ridiculous amount of books that I've bought. I want to read by the end of the year. The ones I'm going to prioritise are the Women's Prize shortlist because I would very much like to read those before the winner is announced, which is going to be in September. And I've only read one of them so far. So the Women's Prize shortlist is my priority. And then also in October, I don't know if I'm going to do Victober this year, but I'm definitely going to concentrate on um, horror gothic and general spookiness so that's my aim for the rest of the year i think those are all the questions i'm going to answer today i'm considering doing a separate video about my top five favorite books which you already know two of um so those were my highlights of the first half of the year Talk to me in the comments below. Have you read any of these? Particularly if you've read any of the ones that I want to get to. Which would you recommend I start with first? Any comments on the books that I've read? Talk to me in the comments below. And I will see you next week for another video. I hope you're all okay. Take care everybody. Bye.